Hello learners, I am Dr. Subodh Kisharwani, working with Indira Gandhi National Open University in the School of Management Studies. The topic which I am going to talk today is Bayes Theorem, which is part of our, you know, the course called MCO3 Research Methodology under the ambit of probability and we have talked a lot about concepts of probability, various distributions of probability and then we are focusing on the Bayes Theorem. So, going into the depth of this Bayes Theorem, one of many applications of Bayes Theorem is Bayesian inference a particular approach to statistical inference. When applied, the probabilities involved in the theorem may have different probability interpretations. With Bayesian probability interpretation, the theorem express how a degree of belief expressed as a probability should rationally change to account for the availability of related evidence. Bayesian inference is fundamental to Bayesian statistics. Bayesian statistics is a mathematical procedures that applies probabilities to statistical problems. It provides people the tools to update their belief in the evidence of new data. So, this video of this head bring to derive and intuitively explains Bayes law. It shows how the observation that joint probabilities can be calculated based on the conditional probability of, of A given B as well as B given A leads to Bayes law. So, there is an edge of Bayesian theorem when you are comparing with, with statistics. The drawback of frequent statistics lead to the need for Bayesian statistics. Discover Bayesian statistics and Bayesian inferences. There are various methods to test the significance of the model like p-value, confidence interval, some other etc. Bayesian statistics continue to remain incomprehensible in the ignited minds of many analysts. Being amazed by the incredible power of machine learning, a lot of us have become unfaithful to statistics and that is the reason which have given S to Bayesian theorem. So, when should we use uh, Bayes theorem? That is a very important question. The Bayes theorem describes the probability of an event based on the prior knowledge of the conditions that might be related to the event. So, if we know the conditional probability, we can use the bias rule to find out the reverse probabilities. So, why is bias rule so important? Bias theorem provides a way to revise existing predictions or theories, update probabilities given new or additional evidence. So, in finance, bias theorem can be used to rate the risk of lending money to potential borrowers. So, as far as this particular course which I was talking about, MCO3 Research Methodology in Statistical Analysis, which is for the commerce student, which is for the postgraduate student. So, this financial aspect if you are talking about, this theorem is going to be quite useful for the learners who are, you know, pursuing their master of commerce. So, quite as far as the finance is concerned, as far as risk lending money is concerned, this is going to helpful to them in a, in a big manner. So, in probability theory and statistics, Bayes theorem alternatively, Bayes law or Bayes rule named after Reverend Thomas Bayes describe the probability of an event based on prior knowledge of conditions that might be related to the event. For example, if the risk of developing health problems is known to increase with age, Bayes theorem allows the risk to an individual of a known age to be assessed more accurately by conditioning it on his age than simply assuming that the individual is typical of the population as a whole. So, if you go into the background of Bayes theorem as far as the equation, as far as the mathematical formula is concerned, it, uh, it allows us to manipulate condition probabilities for two events A and B. Bayes theorem let us to go from probability B given A to probability A given B. If we know the marginal probabilities of the outcomes of A and the probabilities of B given the outcomes of A, here is the equation for Bayes theorem for two events with two possible outcomes A and not A. So, probability of A given B is equal to probability of B given A multiplied by probability of A and that could be divided by probability of B A uh, multiplied by probability A and we are going to sum up with the probability of B A with the probability of probability of A. So, that is the formula which can be come up on the screen of the uh, learners and uh, by that you can able to formalize the Bayes theorem. So, how to update probability of occurrence that need to be answered prior probability that is pi is equal to prior prior or for theory i, posterior probability updated probability for theory i, tumor classification, handwritten digit character recognitions and uh, you know probability class i, these are the terminologies which we are going to take care in a coming, coming slides and uh, we are going to distinguish also what is the difference between prior or and posterior. So, uh, let us take an example, I think uh, there is a, since we all are you know going through the 
pandemic stage so probability of positive corona is 0.98 suppose abc is tested positive what is his chance that he has hiv so 0.98 what other information is needed so that is you know where you know the things are uh, going to be there how can we integrate multiple data sets so published data genetic data expression data and then evolutionary data so you see how we are going to integrate data when we are going to do that and what is bayesian approach to statistics so bayesian statistics assign probabilities to a model that gives us tools for calculating um, probability of model with respect to data and we will see that this cannot be done without assigning a prior or probability to each model we update the model probabilities in the light of each data set rather than imagining them imagining many hypothetical experiments and a philosophy of science we do not rule out models just determine their relative probabilities so if we talk more about the bayesian theorem suppose we have estimated prior probabilities for events we are concerned with and then obtain new information we would like to sound a method to a computer revise or posterior probabilities and bayes theorem give us a way to do this so as discussed earlier the basic objective of calculating probabilities is to facilitate us in decision making for example assume that you are a seller of winter garments obviously you are interested in the demand of winter garments to help you in deciding on the amount you should stock for this winter you have computed the probability of selling different quantities and have noted that the chance of selling a certain quantity is very high and accordingly you have taken the decision to stock a large quantity of the product so suppose when finally the season ends you find that you are left with a large quantity of stock and then you feel that the earlier probability calculation should be revised given the new experience to help you decide on the stock for the next winter and similarly situations exist where we are interested in an event on an ongoing basis so every time some new information is available we revise our probability and this revision of probability with added information is formalized in the probability theory in terms of theorem called bayes theorem and Bayes theorem offers a powerful statistical method of combining our evaluation of new information as well as our prior or statement of the probability to create posterior probability so thus probabilities before revision by bayes concepts are terms that priori probabilities and probabilities which have undergone revision the light of additional information by bayes rules are terms as posterior probabilities or revised probabilities which can be altered after additional information is gathered so we will take into consideration these two terms in a more elaborative manner with the help of certain examples and certain pictorial presentations so that the learners will get a clear view about what exactly the distinguishment between these two terms that is priori and posterior so these probabilities before revision by bias concept termed as prior probabilities and probabilities which have undergone revision in the light of additional information by bias rules are termed as posterior probabilities or revised probabilities which can be altered after additional information is gathered so what is bayesian approach to statistics how does it differ from frequentist approach conditional probabilities we have already have a very elaborative sessions uh, maybe in a, in a in a coming days when we are going to talk more about probability distribution under the ambit of that we are going to talk more about the conditional probability either it is it could be with respect to the dependent variable or independent variable so bayes theorem priori probabilities are are there and examples of applying bayesian statistics and bayesian correlation testing and model selections are also need to be taken care so if you see this particular image you will find out that bayes process is is at the at the center of the thing where priori probability is there then new information is coming up and then afterward you make a sequel of that which is considered as a posterior probability so we this can be also explained with the with the another example another view where you see that uh, bayes theorem is there then likelihood data priori is there and finally posterior distribution is going to be created so you see how the graph is going to be helping and how the data is going to be fruitful for that so a priori and a posteriori are latin phrases used in philosophy to distinguish type of knowledge justification or argument by the reliance on empirical evidence or experiences a priori knowledge is that which is independent from experience in bayesian statistical inference a priori probability distribution often simply called the prior of an uncertain quantity is the probability distribution that would express one's belief about the quantity before some evidence is taken into account 
priors can be created using a number of methods for example include mathematics tautologies and deductions from pure reason so if you have a tabulated comparison between the posteriori and priori you will find out that uh, uh, synthetic and analytic is the important ingredient if you talk in terms of synthetic the posteriori is going to give the true value for now but could be different that is chilies are hard speeding is dangerous contingent but useful vivid whereas on you know, on the other hand if you talk more about the priori with respect to synthetic is prompted but not proved by the experience which is true independent where where independently of experience that is mass the categories of kant cause substance etc to so discoverably use informative necessary structure or experience of the world and uh, if you talk in analytic term i think null is there and when you talk in in a priori terms self evidently true necessary whole wholly independent of any ad, admixture of experience subject contains predicate bachelors are unmarried like these are the things which can come under, come under that so aims to understand the difference between a priori and posteriori is very important a priori before does not start from experience a posteriori is a consider the after experience is needed focus on the word prior and posterior to help you remember which way around they are so this is a way by which we are going to uh, know if you talk about the posteriori knowledge is obtained through experience whereas in priori knowledge is obtained by analyzing concepts independent of experience so priori knowledge which proceeds from theoretical deductions or making assumptions not from experience or observations whereas posteriori is knowledge which proceeds from experience or observation so if you if you have a formula where probability of a and b is considered as a posterior the probability of a being true given b is true and the likelihood is the probability of b given uh, true given a is true the probability of a being true this is the knowledge and uh, the formula is is this and uh, likely if you if you see the priori formula posterior formula is probability of a and b equals probability of b oblique a that is b given a multiplied by probability of a divided by multiplied by probability of b so here you see this particular formula where you will find out that likelihood is considered as probability of b given a prior is probability of a and probability of b is marginalization the probability being b being true so this is the way by which we can able to interpret the formula and uh, in and it is going to be quite useful so if you talk we have already talk about analytics and synthetic with the help of you know the matrix which and uh, if we talk about priori we say that 2 plus 2 equals to 4 or or whatever symbols you wish to use in any situation just because we have chosen to define arithmetic in this way which is called formalism and if you talk in a, in a synthetic term uh, we say that 2 plus 2 equals to 4 in any situation because it is an example of something that we can tell independent of direct experience but that does not just follow from the definition it is called plantonism and if you talk about posteriori it is uh, in analytic it is impossible and if we say in in uh, in synthetic it is called empiricism so we say that 2 plus 2 equals to 4 in any situation because we have experienced instances of this truth and have generalized from there itself so this is a way by which the graph is going to be portrayed and it is could be in the bell shade but you know the shape of the priori belief is is this you find out the shape is this in the and when you have uh, taken evidence and then the posterior belief is somewhat over and above to that so this is the way of interpreting the posterior and priori belief as far as you know the bias theorem is concerned so bias theorem is more talking about with the formula p uh, probability of a given b this which is probability of b given a multiplied by probability of a divided by probability of b where p a by b is probability of a given observation b and probability of b oblique a is probability of observation of b given a and p a is a priori probability of a the pro and p b is the probability of the b is observed and bias theorem deal with inverse probabilities so now what is bias approach to statistics an important rule is played by bias theorem which can be derived from elementary probability and uh, the formula which i have already quoted in the in the past also p probability of a given b is equal to probability of b given a multiplied by probability of a divided by probability of b and if you talk about you know in a in a different mode i think 
probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A given B multiplied by probability of B equals to probability of B given A multiplied by probability of A. So this is the formula and, and uh, by this we can able to do that. So now the thing is that since we have talked a, a lot about conditional probability or we are going to talk about the conditional probability in our forthcoming session under the ambit of probability distribution, I think uh, the question which comes in our mind is that is bias theorem conditional probability? Now bias rule is used to calculate what are informally referred to as reverse conditional probabilities which are co the conditional probabilities of an event in a partition of the small space given any other event. So a friend tells you uh, he had a nice conversation with someone in the train when they were traveling. So what is chance that other person is a woman? So your friend only tells you that the person has long hair and does, the change, does this change the previous probability? If you go say 75 percent women have long hair, 15 percent of men have long hair. So this is the way uh, the example is going to be taken care and uh, there are some more examples which are there like a consulting firm submitted a bid for large consulting contract. The firm management felt it had a 50-50 chance of landing the project. However, the agency to which the bid was submitted subsequently asked for the additional information. Past experiences indicates that for 75% of success bids and 40% of unsuccessful bids, the agency asked for additional information. What is prior probability of the bid being successful? That is prior to the request for the additional information. What is the conditional probability of a request for additional information given that the bid will be ultimately successful? Compute the posterior probability that the bid will be successful given a request for additional information. So if you are going to calculate with the help of this formula, I think S1 denotes the event of successful obtaining the project, S2 is the event of not obtaining the project and B is the event of being asked for additional information about a bid. So P S1 is equal to 0.5, probability of B with respect to S1 is 0.75 and while using this bias theorem to compute the posterior probability that a request for information indicates a successful bid, I think the formula is P S1 with respect given by B is P S1 intersection B divided by P S1 intersection B plus P uh, S2 intersection B. So this is the formula and when we put the figures and compute it the value is coming 6.52. So in a factory there are, this is another example which you can take in a factory there are two machines manufacturing bolts. The first manufactures 75 percent of the bolts and the second machine manufacturers the remaining 25 percent. So from the first machine 5 percent of the bolts are defective. And from the second machine, 8% of the bolts are defective. A bolt is selected at the random which the probability the bolt came from the first machine given that it is defective. So let A be the event that a bolt is defective and let B the event that bolt ca came from machine 1. Probability of B is 0.75 and probability of B hash is 0.25 whereas probability of A given B is 0 0.05 and probability of A by given B hash is 0 0.08. So now using bias theorem to find the required probability with the help of the formula we can able to calculate and the value is coming 0.3846. So now applying bias theorem to cancer patient this is another hypothetical example which we have taken and we see what is the repercussion and what are the impact of you know applying the bias theorem while you know checking it. So even if 100% of patient with pancreatic cancer have a certain symptom when someone has the same symptom it does not mean that this person has 100% chance of getting pancreatic cancer. Assume the incidence rate of pancreatic cancer is 1 divided by 1 lakh while 1 oblique 10,000 healthy individuals have the same sim symptoms worldwide. The probability of having pancreatic cancer given the symptom is only 9.1% and the other 99.9% .9 could be false positives that is falsely said to have cancer positive is a confusing term when as there the test gives the bad news. So based on the incident rate the following table presents the corresponding numbers per 1 lakh people. So if you see this table I think what we have done we have plot the cancer sim symptom at the column 1 which is known as cancer symptom yes no in total and then at the row wise we have done it. So if we if we plot this particular formula and then you know make it the which can be used to calculate the probability of having cancer when you have the symptoms. I think P cancer symptom is equals to probability of symptoms oblique uh, given cancer and probability of cancer divided by probability of symptoms. And when we put the formula the value is coming 9.1%. So what we have observed that in the Bayesian or epistemological interpretation probability measures a degree of belief 
Bayesian theorem links the degree of belief in a proposition before and after accounting for evidence. And there are some more examples, you know, which can defend this particular theorem. And uh, as far as the interpretation is concerned, so it is believed that 50% certainty that a coin is twice as likely to land heads than tail if the coin is flipped a number of times and the outcome observed that the degree of belief will probably rise or fall, but might even remain the same depending on the results. So for proposition A and evidence B, probability of A the prior or is the initial degree of belief in A. Probability of uh, A given B, the posterior is the degree of belief after incorporating news that is B is true and the quotient that is probability of B oblique probability of uh, A oblique B represents the support B provides for A. So I think we have talked a lot about probability starting from the curtain result to probability then talking you know more about you know the different aspect as far as the rules are concerned and then you know we have talked about statistics with respect to dependent variable and independent variable and then Bayesian theorem is, is playing a very important role as far as the calculation is concerned. So this is all about you know the particular chapter which was just focused on the preamble part of, of, of probability uh, and you know part of our chapter uh, 13 and uh, now we are moving towards you know in a coming session we are moving towards probability distributions and you will find out there are various types of distributions which are going to be taken care either it could be conditional marginal or joint with respect to that and uh, we can also emphasize more on you know the different aspects like um, uh, the poison distribution or you know the binomial distribution or you know different kinds of distribution in the coming heads thank you very much we will have some more thought provoking session which can back this particular block because this block is more emphasized on the testing and after accomplishing this particular chapter you know particular block we can able to do lot of things in statistics because the concept building part had been done the academic part had been done the research analysis had been done the now the time had come where we are going to come out from the trend analysis and do lot of testings and finally when the test results come then we start you know making the uh, accumulating all those tests and making a report. So this is going to give us a complete view, complete report about that which could be you know the part of the forthcoming discussions which we are going to take when we are going to give the final touch to this particular course. So this is all about this probability and uh, once we move towards the probability distribution after accomplishing that we can move towards testing of hypothesis then particular tests are going to be applied either it could be the T's test, ANOVA test or you know different kinds of tests because with the help of these tests we are going to move towards the execution. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.